Raven, she her bad self. Raven, she somebody else. Raven, you better watch out. Raven, she her bad self. Yo, what happened at the end of Beast World? Don't hesitate. We found out Dark Raven was Dr. Hate, H A T. Don't need no PhD, cause Raven is B A D. Like Michael Jackson, she's a thriller. The dark raven, oh no, she a killer. Daddy issues up to her chakra gem. If Beast Boy finds out what it's up, then she probably banishes so to hell. So he won't be able to tell. But the whole world is afraid of God. Amanda Waller took it way too far. Raven, she her back. She's somebody else, Raven. You better watch out, Raven. She a bad She's too far gone. Oh no, here comes Trigon. Watch out for that Trigon, Aaron. He'll, he'll get watch you every the time there. Look at that. The what I Big would Daddy always. I would always consider uh, mumble rap, but it's in fact trap. E E M D. I got it. I'm too old to know these. <laughs> yeah, the traps. What's happening? Yeah, it's the traps. And oh my goodness, what is happening here? It's a surprise. But we end up here with a thank God it's Friday. Unfortunately, when we used to do that, we'd have a little bit of the gem Gwen Stefani telling us all about that. But you know, you Can't don't do like that. to get things torn uh-uh. down. You, you don't want things to not work out. Stricken. On the YouTubes, and that's one of the things we're doing this as man. Maybe we'll start a little bit of a trend at points to maybe do two, one, two, buckle my shoe books on the YouTube each Friday. Something new, something different, maybe even something live at one point. But maybe here we are. And anytime we have over five books, usually is what we yeah. we end up having to talk about on the main show. We will talk about a couple things on Friday, but. It always does seem and always ends up fitting that we do have the Tom Taylor section that we end up week. making. It. it is. And it is the Titan. The section of Tom the Taylor Nightwing. works it so is. well together. And in that, just again, Tanya was actually listening to a couple things of our shows and things like that the other day. And she did say, like, you you can tell you two talked a lot together. And I'm like, I hope so. We, we've done a lot. Of, but it, it goes beyond that of what I'm reading. And I'm, the lineup of the books, I don't even know how many we have at that one point. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to be doing these two on Friday before I even like even get the stats down because of the way that things go. But these actually work well together. Especially, especially because, this week. Yeah, especially this week. Especially in a week where they've decided to ditch the backup in Nightwing only to put a little preview of the titans and that's the funny that's thing about it the, the back up to nightwing is just the front up to titans yeah yeah i actually was going to tell you like don't bother if you because re- i would figure you'd read nightwing first of course I'm like don't bother with that did you read it first and then go to titans you're like oh god this is the same thing or did oh, no, you that's the thing. Realize? no no i did, i read the whole thing i jumped in and i started thinking like i was having deja vu or something because i didn't read them back, All to over back right again. away and i'm thinking to myself like did I start reading the Titans last night? Like, is this why I'm remembered that I have to go back to Nightwing? Like, oh no, it's just the same thing over again. Just the same thing over again. And I, I would love to say that they gave people a bit of a discount, but they did not give people no. a discount. You ended up getting you paid a that preview. extra dollar for some more Vanadia. Now, now, when you get Vanadia, where I love it in that, when we get to the Titans, I came up with a cool vin- villain name, Vanadia. I, I can't even say it. It sounds like some crazy furniture store from like sweet I, well, I even the idea of this, of this new titans villain going on vanadia you and i looked this up previously when the last titans issue hit or nightwing whatever the last time like it showed up in the previous issues and it's like the only thing that really is this name is an old country that was in a blackhawks book back in the silver age i think it was and i'm like this better play into something because vanadia just feels like it, it feels like it gets out of nowhere again when we get to that titans book i'll tell you it just feels like you need some other thing going on, and that's what that is. It does. And so we're going to start with Nightwing, and everybody should know by now, but if you don't, Tom Taylor's run is coming to an end, and the big thing at the end is obviously going to be Heartless, but with that also, the Nightwings can't leap. Dick he Grayson can't, can't leap, leap. Now, we talk about this, and me and you talk about it. Where he's but we talk of, about yeah. it where he can't leap. He's afraid of heights, but he can't leap. I had the, what I had a theory, I'm not quite going to go with this theory anymore, but I will. Uh-huh. It ties into it. The idea that 
You keep saying leap, leap, leap. Now, you said something on our Patreon spotlight that comes out every Thursday on our Patreon.com slash Weird Science, where we're talking about the idea of leaping and the idea of how the acrobats, they all this stuff coming. And then when we get into this and I read it again, I'm thinking that there's more to it. I still think that what they're doing is, you know, you don't want to, you're making that leap by getting married. He's right. afraid of it. But I think there's a little bit more to it that, that really pokes its head in this. But well, that, again, that, that, that's the thing. The idea of this all stemmed from one like, oh, we got this video released now. We finally see when Tony Zuko murdered your parents. I feel since he like, I don't even know what the continuity is anymore because I've seen him go to jail for the murder of the Graysons. And like the idea that the video is now released, Dick Grayson saw that. And ever since that time, he has not been able to leave. And that's when the struggle seemed to start. And so here's my, you want to, uh, you want me to just give you my full theory first or give should I up. give the credit? Should I give the eh, credit? Give or? the credit. So let's get down okay. to one. Here is the credits for this. It's Nightwing number 114, part one of the Fallen Grace and Tom Taylor writing, putting over Dundo on art with Adriana with and Wes Abbott. Here's my theory. The idea that I still think that it will be the idea that Dick Grayson will want to ask Barbara to marry him. Mm-hmm. But in that, you have two things in this where you have. Dick Grayson thinking about the time when, oh, man, you know, my mom and dad, they were doing all this stuff, and I wanted to be like them, and I climbed real high up, and I ended up falling. I, that but was I the got, first time I, I got, fell. Right? But I got the little legs. My feet yeah. didn't hit the rungs right, and I fell backwards, and so I hurt myself. So he fell backwards. But it's, not, it's, it's that combined with the idea, then, where he's talking about where you have Heartless say, look at him. He looks happy, doesn't he? He looked like this before he fell. Do you remember or they fell and says, you know, I do show up and they're like, do you think it will feel as good as it did then when we watched his parents at the ground? The thing this is, I believe that what Dick Grayson is going through is with Barbara and possibly asking her to marry him with Haley, all that. He has not been as happy as he is right now as right before his parents died. And this is why when he saw that, it triggered it again in the security footage of like, oh, my God. Yeah, you know what? I haven't been. I've always and he's finally seemingly gotten by it. But now he can't because he thinks in his subconscious that he's just going to end up having bad things happen. If he admits or does, this is the point where he's been as happiest as he was at that. So what you're telling me is Heartless could be the greatest psychologist of all time. Yeah, he is. And (laughs) and when he said that, the idea of it (laughs) threw me like, I think he's spot on. Look at this guy. (laughs) Look at this Shelton guy. He knows what's going on there. But again, and. Where you get Heartless, he's waiting till the point. And Heartless gets a lot of, like, at one point, he's doing one thing. Then he's yelling about, people have to love you. Got rid of that, but back with that. And I think that this is where he's going to get back to the, I had to wait until he was loved the most. And he was so happy, and he's going to end up doing that. But we end up seeing that all along. Which is so weird, because we've been talking about that idea for a while, where Shelton wants to destroy Dick Grayson. Once he's at the peak of people loving him in Bloodhaven for all he's done, now he's moved on to Gotham in this issue, and he wants to use the Alfred Pennyworth Foundation to help everybody there like he did in Bloodhaven, and Shelton's like, not on my watch. But even when he's getting his crew together, the people that used to work for Sal Maroney and the people that used to work for Blockbuster, he's like, I got your kids, and if you don't work for me, I'm going to take your heart out in front of them. And like, you're, you're back to classic Heartless now. Like, I just can't really... Figure out the, your motivations at this point. His yeah. MO was all over the place. At points, it was just getting hearts because he had cybernetics and they were fritzing and, out his heart would blow out. And then and the he thing all, is, yeah. is it just Dick Grayson? Because this whole thing was stepping back from childhood when he witnessed them fall and he loved the look of devastation on Dick Grayson's face when he saw their parents die. Like, does he, is he just looking for that nostalgia thrill? So he's got to think outside of the box what he does, is doing now. He's, he's chasing the horse here. Exactly. He, he, he can't get that thrill. And then he sees Dick Grayson back and the idea that he is as happy as he is with Barbara Haley and even Bruce and everything going on here, having that money. You know, money can't buy you love that, Eric, but it could buy a whole lot of other things. I'll try. And so in that, I do think that while Dick Grayson is trying to think, okay, I just have this phobia now, I do think that it is. He's subconsciously worried that the last time he was this happy, including maybe thinking of asking Barbara to marry him, that he ended up having bad things. And he's afraid that if he lets himself be this happy, this will happen. And we'll see how it plays out. But again, Tom Taylor does like to go back and, and do the feels of young Dick Grayson. There he is. He's seeing his parents. They're having a grand old time. He's, you know, going up the which ladder. Is, he slips. Which is the craziest part because this is a flashback in his mind two weeks in the future from our current continuity timeline. 
to where now he's climbing a mountain with Haley the dog. And it's such a weird thing, too, because I like to think of Haley as still a puppy. And at times, Haley the three-legged dog is still a puppy. And I swear there's like size shifting from panel to panel for how big this dog is. I would hope that as they're going, and again, somebody will say that if, I don't know how running scared people are anymore. If Tom Taylor ended up, because in me, if it was me, I'd have Dick Grayson, if he wants Haley with him, Haley would be on a parka papoose. and be on a sled or a papoose, <laughs> would be one of those that he needs the, you know, the companionship. But the idea where they're there climbing what looks like the Himalayas, for crying out loud, know. and there's a three-legged dog that I'm telling you, is eight-legged dogs are going to have struggles here. And he ends up where Dick Grayson even says, well, you have it easy. <laughs> you have one more leg. I'm like, a dog with three legs, it, it's tough. But showing that, ha- oh, Haley can do it. Again, I don't know, and it just That's felt kind wing, of forced. Man. Yeah, it, it felt kind of forced in this. Be funny in the outfit if it was the bright wing outfit, but you end up where all that going and then going off to, you know, two weeks ago with Heartless with Shelton, where he is getting Maroni and Blockbusters guys, and you know, people are going to say, "Hey, I, I ain't going to follow you, jerk off." And and it's then, just like the scene in Batman 89 when the Joker takes over. It's like, oh, we don't want to follow you. So I'm like, okay, I got to make an example of somebody tonight. And the weirdest part about this situation where he has his crew, it's like, all right, I took this guy's heart out with this gun that you didn't see next to me this whole time. It just came out of nowhere. Bam, I got your heart in front of your kids. Just kids are screaming in a little glass hallway that I have to the side here. All right, everybody else, you're in favor of me being your new boss? Good. Now, on top of everything I just mentioned right now, we're going to be taking out Dick Grayson. And I need to brand you in the chest with my insignia. I'm like, I don't know okay. about all that. And again, this starts to get more of, and in my mind, Tom Taylor has waited way too long for this Heartless. And now, each time you have to up the ante, you have yep. to get it. Now it's the gang of Heartless. Like before, it would have been just Dick Grayson. Remember, and even that when Dick Grayson fought him, the only, pretty much only time, I, I don't, I think he has superpowers. And, but, but he doesn't seem to know how to work them. That led to now cybernetics. That led to this. Now all of a sudden, he's making an army where he's branding people. But even then, I thought, Okay, we have the focus group of kids. After this guy ends up dying, and poor Abigail, daddy, daddy, they go in like, did you really believe that that guy died? Like, they want to focus group the kids there. But in that, <laughs> you end up heartless, almost trying to play off a side thing of, listen, I don't hurt kids. I only hurt bad, you know, people who don't only follow hurt my rules. Parents. So I love when he says, I will not hurt your kids. I will just watch or let them watch you die. I'm like, that kind of hurts the kids. <laughs> he said they won't be harmed. Physically, I don't hurt them. Mentally, I tear them up. He says, it cross me and they will not be harmed. Instead, your life will be taken and your child will watch. I'm like, no, 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 that might be that might be worse, Heartless. I, I know what you're saying here. You're trying to play it off pretty good. And like, who's with me? And then, like you said, it. and then how's this go in your mind? Okay, this is it. Dick Grayson has tried to change Bloodhaven and now Gotham, and we're going to do something about it. We're going to stay yeah. hidden. We're going to stay in the shadows. We're going to make sure nobody knows who we are. Okay, everybody, we're getting tattoos. T- take it's your like, shirts off. This isn't the idea of staying in the shadows or staying hidden. You're uh, all right, getting guys, the guys. same tattoo, right? Now that now that you all work for me, you got to make sure that you have high collared, bu- I mean, high buttoned up shirts because you can't expose this tattoo I just gave you. Yeah, I'm looking at these guys. At least it's one of these brand. guys like likes to go around town without a shirt on. That you know, well, the guy thinks it's he's just time he goes. So he walks around with a leather vest, nothing else. It's a Saturday night. You're looking for some good times. But yeah, exactly. Like, but again, even them mowing your lawn. I see these people out there that mow the city. lawn, the shirts up. <laughs> well, somebody has a lawn somewhere. But also when you do that too, I don't know. I'm saying that there's going to be some of these wackadoos that are going to go off to like the bar. Hey, look at me. Look at this tattoo. I got the heartless tattoo. Look at this guy. I, I just, I don't think it's a way to keep Well, thankfully, on the nobody, nobody in this crew that used to work for Maroney and Blackbuster are me. That is that is true. Or or the best it would be great if it was me. I never take off my shirt and I'd never go to the bar. So I would yeah. be really well done. You're but, the perfect stooge. Yeah, I am. Look at me. But then again I'd be there and I'd be I'd be so upset because it'd be my only tattoo. I don't live my body's a temple, Eric. But also yeah. it, you know I'd hurt and you know I'd be a baby about it. And then I'd be like, it really hurts. And I'd be you let me look at it. And then I'd, I'd actually, I'd scratch it so much and it'd end up looking like your green goblin tattoo. That thing's a mess. So you end up where all this mess. stuff, they're Just branded. Faded. And even then when I see it, I'm like, is that like a map of Africa? I don't know what's going on here. But you end up, they're all branded. So they're all branded. I thought that you would brand it over the heart, but it's like the middle. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's hard, Jason. It's there. They're all getting branded. It's like they're in some fraternity. 
something like that. But you end up where Dick Grayson then, he hits Goth. And even then he gets word from Barbara. Hey, and how many times in the past, like, six months have we had this scene where Dick Grayson's doing something and Barbara will say, you better hurry up because it is your day after all. It's, it was his birthday one time. It was this. Now it's this. It always feels like something like this is happening. But you have to show, like, oh, we're in cesspool, Gotham. I mean, he is in this alleyway. <laughs> it's, it's the worst. Well, Just the thing. Look at the idea of oh. c- cesspool, Gotham. He grew up in all this. He's back in town for a few days to thrill. And it's like, oh, my God, I just saw somebody rob something from a store. I can't do the rooftop thing because leaping's hard for me right now. But I'm going to chase his ass down a street into an alley, which I know is a dead end. I'm going to smack him in the face because he reached into his jacket. I don't know if he's got a knife or a gun. I'm just going to beat the crap out of this guy. Oh, my God, things are so bad in Gotham. I just beat the crap out of a guy who stole a rotisserie chicken to feed him and his family. What? Woe is Nightwing. I'm like, yeah, woe is Nightwing. That's what I big, say. Your biggest problem, though, with your action parts is just always just the idea of, like, you got to keep showing people that Nightwing, he's such a good guy that this is going to hurt him. So I'm like, we are all reading this book because we like Nightwing. We know he's a good guy. You don't have to do it each issue with the over-the-topness of it all. And and so when he's he's walking through, and, and again, it's very preachy. He's walking through Gotham. He's taking the long route, right? He's there at uh, Burn Barrel City. That, then he ends up going and seeing influencers drunk, passing by guy wanting change. Then you end up seeing this guy legitimately bum rush the show she, here. She ends did. up like just wrecking this guy, this security the security guard. guard yep. Yeah. So he runs. The thing about this is, is after he finds out this guy is a rotisserie chicken. That does not make that guy a good guy. It makes that guy a desperate guy. It makes that guy somebody that you might want to help. But don't think in one minute that you should be sorry that you reacted to a guy bum rushing the show, running and looking like he was pulling a gun, and you actually just hit him with your baton as he pulls out what is is the weirdest looking package of rotisserie chicken I've ever seen in my entire life. But there it is. And again, when you go from this, this is what Tom Taylor keeps doing. Nightwing is going through all these bad things when, in fact, what Nightwing usually has done, and I've, I've complained about it, but we can think that in between scenes and panel, things are worked out. For the most part, he throws money at a lot of things. Things are oh, solved yeah. because of throwing money at him. And then you get to Gotham, and he's, woe is me. Uh, you know, money isn't the, like, he goes against what he was doing in Bloodhaven, almost forgetting that he's throwing money at things. And almost throwing shade at, like, Bruce Wayne, Batman, and why the city's bad. But there's more than that. And Tom Taylor wants to be surface level. So when Dick Grayson sees this guy as a rotisserie chicken, it's what was me, Nightwing. I mean, he looks like he lost his family, like his parents. Are. It's like the flying Grayson's just died. Oh, right God, I can't leave. He, he's so sad because he ended up almost the idea, even when he talks to Barbara, the idea that he kind of profiled this guy thinking that he was bad, but, but but the thing is, the guy still broke the law. There's a reason why, and maybe you can fix it that sort of way, but a guy bum-rushing the show and then looking like he's grabbing for it, all you did was throw a baton to stop him. And there you are, and he probably let him go with the rotisserie chicken, you assume. And But he thinks he's in the wrong, and I don't get that play. You said it perfectly. This is still set up in the stretch run, the end of this long run. We're still in the mode. Of Tom Taylor being a PR agent that says to us every issue that Nightwing is the greatest thing ever. Nightwing, Dick Grayson, my favorite character. I would say, as a joke, I mean, you are here. A lot of times you end up, you know, kind of, I don't remember that. I would say as a joke, my favorite character is Dick Grayson, all iterations, because his superpower is he's a nice guy. I have said that on this podcast a trillion times. And why I thought it was funny to say it to you. It's because it was so obvious, and I was—I would pretend that I'm I'm cracking the code, and I'm <laughs> like, like I'm cracking the code. Bitch virtue and, signaling and it, for freaking and comic was. books. And so it was my it was my joke to you, and and I would just say it out of no, like you know why? This, like I would just say it as a joke, but that's what this has been. So if you are reading it, maybe it's just you are sick and tired of so many other things. This is a nice book to read because the hero is a good guy yeah. and things like that. If you are willing to let that be the major focus that actually gets in the you know in the way of some storytelling and progression then uh, all the power to you but when you're reading it and reading other books and want something big it never ends up feeling as big because we're dealing with 
PR of him being a great guy, and then we get to the story, and then, and then it's over. This is the quickest it's over read. immediately. We, it seems we like. joke. No, no, you, you say it's the, the quickest, quickest read. Deal. Titans is the quickest read. We we say that Tom Taylor issues are the quickest deal. <laughs> there are times when we do have a podcast or even making a video, whatnot, that we'll think, okay, how long is this going to take? We we both do this. We start at a certain time, I think, and I'm always wrong. But I yeah. think, okay, this this. Uh, but when we have a say a spotlight two tom taylor books we would generally say like this is a breeze like you oh, yeah. don't even have to like really That's all we do these two books together because it's like the easiest thing to get done before we have to do the big show on the weekend it is but and we can kind of relax and, and kind of have fun with them it makes sense but you have all that go and now we have to get to whatever this thing is that barbara said it's your thing we're going to pennyworth foundation yeah. and that's what we're getting to and it's kind of like I don't know why it seems to be like it has to be a big reveal when we get to it. But also, I, I didn't love the way Barbara looked here. I, I don't want to shame anybody. but Oh, no, she's not. She doesn't look great here. No. And even the idea of the way that she's kind of been like redesigned for her look for this. Like, I think the book genuinely looks good, but I don't yeah, like the I way love Barbara Gordon looks Sarp, but I as like her. Barbara Gordon. And even we have Damian Wayne show up for a little bit of humor. The idea of the sassy Robin coming. He's got to wear a suit. He doesn't like the, the constriction of it. I swear his size changes throughout this, just like Haley the dog, because at one point he's barely up to Bruce's waist, it looks like, next he's shoulder with, you know, up to, like, uh, Dick's shoulder. And I'm like, hey, this boy is going through a growth spurt, this issue. On one page, he's, like, barely up to even Barbara's shoulder. Then he's at the shoulder of Nightwing, and then down below where you have a pullout shot, he's actually almost as tall as Dick That's Grayson crazy. at one point. It is crazy. I like, I'll tell you, though, you know, the genetics and whatnot, but, but it does look like it. I, I think that if I asked for an redundo, which I actually could, obviously he's trying to make him look like, you know, Italia combo Bruce Wayne, but really a Bruce Wayne. But it does look like Damien at points is definitely trying to manscape a bit to look like Nightwing. Like Nightwing is his <laughs> epitome uh, of hotness and he wants to get there. Even then, though, I don't mind this Damien. He plays like he doesn't want to be there. This probably yeah. is something that. He is probably okay with, but he wants to be out patrolling. And now he has to put on his suit and definitely free balls where he's like, it's restricting where I prefer freedom. I'm like, I know what you're talking about, Damien. We're but- not even, even talking about the idea of the size shifting that's going on with Damien. This Haley the dog I want to keep bringing it up. You know, the way that Barbara Gordon looks because it's a, I don't know, it's just not Barbara Gordon enough for me. And even to the idea, though, that I wanted to bring home here is that I don't know when this is taking place in the timeline because Bruce Wayne has two human fleshy hands and not one robot hand like he does in Sidarsky's Batman run. Yeah, and even if you go with things that are like, <laughs> as you're there, like, what are you doing? I mean, fail safe Zorin our robots out in the battle. Like, is he invited? Like, so, <laughs> but sometimes in these, you can't play the deal. Yeah. And so when, when you're going here. But just, just imagine that, though, just how ominous Bruce Wayne will look when he's up to the podium with one black glove on. <laughs> I mean, it would be crazy. That <laughs> this driving glove on. Looks like he's Luke Skywalker, Return of the Jedi. I sat there. I'm like, they got Haley Barber. Like, why would you put the dog in that turquoise dress there? Oh, wait. <laughs> That's a you. joke. She, she, it just looks different. I, it just threw me. Uh, but in that, you have the play of, hey, they're trying to get the Pennyworth Foundation going. They're trying to raise money. They do throw some shade. Uh, maybe some people would get upset about how you do these fundraisers. You have to end up smoothing and convincing oh, yeah. people. They guilt them, you know, guilt them into giving money and also take Haley the dog up and you know you have Nightwing I don't think that that's right no no that's what we're how you do that that's exactly how you do this I grew up rich I tried I tried to make you grow up rich for some reason you didn't understand this but you have to schmooze these people I and did. manipulate oh I them. thought you meant me I, I thought you, you no, actually no. and I'm like how did you tell me how to be rich seriously <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's, that's what he's talking about I lead I'm covered in action figures so yeah exactly that is pretty cool so you end up where you go to the podium and Bruce Wayne introduces him. And in that, we do go by Shelt Lyle. And even then, when you have, and it's heartless, you have Damien right away. Who's slimy smile guy? Oh, you know, that's from when we were kids. That Shelton Lyle, I ended up knocking that guy's teeth out. He has predatory pharmaceutical company. And then again, to just really preachy push it in, I'm not going to ever take money from him. I'm like, well, you know, in my mind, he might be really bad. They'll push it even more. But if you could use that money for good, maybe maybe you should. Maybe you should maybe. end up because that would be the idea of you going and he has something bad, but you can actually turn it around. And maybe if you think the predatory pharmaceutical, that's the part that you start like a drug rehab. So something that would 
be okay. And I think that Dick Grayson would do that. But once well, we that's get the thing, going, though. The idea of him taking money from Shelton and Lyle here. It's like, all set up. The thing, you don't want to do anything like that because Dick Grayson's going to have some problems going on where reporters are asking, hey, what's going on with the Alfred Pennyworth Foundation? I hear that you had all this money donated to you from Blockbuster himself once he died. Like, yeah. But, but what? Uh, that's why you had to put in there first up that Dick Grayson would never take money from somebody bad. But all of a sudden, this guy, whether it's true or not, I'm, I'm assuming it's true. Hey, what happened? That blockbuster, Roland Desmond, he left you money to who is not watching. Like, I, know. I, I assume Barbara was in charge. I assume I, that, she's not an accountant. But maybe she, like what? I don't because we don't know. Somebody don't. has to be watching and he has to be more on the ball. Dick's knowing. just a lazy millionaire. Well, he and that's the thing you say that it's true because he spent so much damn money already. He was a billionaire. Now that that's the thing though. I assume that he has to talk to somebody when he's like, okay, I want to start this Alfred Pennyworth Foundation in Gotham. It's worked out in, in Blood Aim. We're going to raise some money. He has to know at least something and see, but he, he hasn't been paying attention. The idea that all of a sudden millions of dollars seems to have funneled in from Blockbuster and he wasn't aware. But again, this might have been somebody in the back end setting him up. This I, might have I, been something going. Obviously, this has to be some kind of setup because you know that he's not taking money from Roland Desmond alive or dead at this point. But if I'm reading the paper or watching some news program the next day after all of this like you know, goes down and I see the video of this reporter saying, hey, did you know Roland Desmond, Mr. Grace? It's like, well, I uh, I knew of him. Well, <laughs> These photos show you, Mr. Wayne and Barbara Gordon with Roland Desmond, the crime lord known as Blockbuster at the opening of The Haven. I'm like, oh, I can't trust that dude. He's guilty. He just said he knew of him. He said, has pictures taken with yeah, him. Oh, that bad. Dick Grayson. He's no good. Yeah, it looks bad. And in that all, oh, it just it ends up where you can even go further because, you know, Roland Desmond did die. Mysterious circumstance. You could assume that maybe he killed him to get that money that he knew it was going to be left or whatever. Now, it's very odd. Do you, do you want to say there's going to be an easy explanation when Roland Desmond died? The money went to his daughter, Olivia, and then they, uh, Dick took that money in order to care for the girl to make sure it's safe for when she's, you know, training on Themyscira and whatnot, doing all the stuff that she's going to do. You, you could have had that. But in, in the, like, then, then the best is that what, what, that whole eye, eyes wide open deal. That is the eyes wide open of. How did you find that out? Not the idea of, <laughs> oh, my God, what are you talking about? Well, you know what I mean? Like, this seems weird. But while all that's going on and everybody's looking and Bruce Wayne has a very nice, I mean, a really nice speech where he says, my parents, you know, and goes and, hey, Alfred Pennyworth, billionaire, I never knew about. It. I love that he has to throw that in. Like, that pisses him off to all. I never like, knew I that my manservant was a billionaire. That's how good that guy was. Still chose to serve. And, you know, with his money, he's it's still being able to help people. And this is what he wanted. My parents, Martha and Thomas Wayne, they died before their time taken from us too soon. And one of the things that I wish they were able to do was meet their grandson, Dick Grayson. Great line. And it was great. And and says, I know they'd be as proud of Dick as I am. And I mean, we say that Stop. at the dock every week. So you have all that go. All that is happening here in my mind now is, I mean, Shelton Lyle. The heartless is drooling like he's like holy crap like you oh and so at the end all of a sudden somebody pulls a fire alarm things are going off dick grayson is now like oh my god and you do have what looks like in my mind bruce wayne completely losing it like i've never seen like he's like everybody calm down he's like screaming <laughs> at the top of his lungs and then you end up gerald Get ready. We're going to carve out a heart. He definitely, in my mind, means Bruce Wayne at this point. It's not yet the idea of... So it's a weird thing because we, we know that we're going to be going after Dick Grayson. He's the main target. But when we get to this gala now, you think that old Shelton Lyle here just says his addiction hits hard when he hears all these words that Bruce is like, gotta go back to the old ways. Yeah, I, I feel like this whole thing is that he's Start now gonna, a bit. He's going to go after Bruce Wayne, thinking that that would end up because... Dick Grayson loves him and he loves it. I think that this is all the setup of now trying to pick off some people, but we know he's not going to be able to, or he's like, get that three legged dog now. Oh, no. But all in all, you know, I think that it's not fully out. Like let's get Dick Grayson. It seems like too quick. We got to do things with the, the army of, of heartless <laughs> the yeah. nonsense tattooed guys. But uh, even in that, you end up having everybody scattered. But it's very quick read, very oh, quick yeah. read. Some of the stuff that, again, you end up where I said, and I've said this also, it feels like empty calories. When, you, when you're reading it, it's like a soda pop, Eric, like the Faygo. 
you're there, you're, you're watching the insane clown posse, you're having a great time, you're drinking the fake. Obviously. But, and, but then <laughs> afterwards, the, the insane clown posse, they leave town. You don't know if they're going to come back. Eric. And the Fago, all it is is like sticky crap. I got a good idea they're coming back to Philadelphia. <laughs> and then you're at the end, you're like left wondering like, okay, I did like it then, but maybe the memories start getting less. It just ends up where it's not good calories. What are you like, trying to say? Okay, I'm, I'm like, I lost the plot here you never just talking about the insane clown posse. Afterwards, when you're there, the insane clown posse leaves town. You got the Fago, but you, you're like, Hey guys, you want to actually go get something to eat because it never was fulfilling, including the insane clown. What you, what you have to understand, though, threw everything out the window. Yeah, it didn't I, make I any say, sense I, then. That that memory is going to remain for a long time because you're not going to stop being sticky for a long time from all that fago. Your clothes ain't ever going to smell the right the right again. We're going to go do something, but let's eat dinner, and dinner ends up being the fago. And then afterwards, you're like, man, I should have eaten something more. You did enjoy the fago, you know that red pop while you're doing. But then I it, it, pop so it, much. it didn't end up being good, but it is empty calories. It, it, it's not filling overall. It just ends up when it ends. You're always thinking to yourself, well, not much happened here. I get it in the – and if people say to me, Tom Taylor's run, I don't know how many issues it was so far, but it will play better in trade. I do agree. But I think that a trade, you know, say an omnibus, an omnibus that includes 50 issues will read better, but it will also feel like 28. It's never going to feel like a full 50, but if you read them all together, it might feel a little more satisfying. Yeah. But at the end, I can't say this is bad. It's setting up things kind of wacky, but it doesn't do enough to be good or bad by the end. Well, what, once we get to the Alfred Pennyworth Foundation, things start picking up in my mind. It's just sadly, it, it ends pretty much right after that because you have the whole beginning of flashback to the idea where Dick Grayson wanted to fly like his parents. He done slipped and fell a little bit that he's on the mountains and he go two weeks ago, Heartless is doing stuff. Stuff with Heartless, fine. We're, we're building some character stuff up with the idea of the army of Heartless. I can go with that. And then in Dick Grayson and Gotham, like, oh, my God, I attacked a man who's just trying to feed himself and or his family. I feel bad. And, like, it, it's just not enough there for your action quota of the book. It's just it's that constant, like, hey, Dick Grayson's a good guy. He feels bad about this. But there is some stuff to enjoy at the podium with the nice things that Dick says. Everybody coming together in the Bat family. It's always good to see that. But because And the art's great besides for the size shifting and Barbara Gordon's face for some reason. Besides that, all good. It's just not enough to really say, boy. This Nightwing hits hard each and every time it comes out. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 6-5. I, I like the art, but you'll like you said, it does change. One thing I did like, the description, and I'm, I think a lot of people have had it. I fell off a couple, you know, slides and things like that when he says that. That sharp taste of Oops. metal, when you yeah. end up falling in it, like you actually hit your teeth in your mouth on things. Though in the art, it doesn't quite play it up as much oh, as all that, i can think about is this one time as a kid i'm like you know in the back of the school bus i'm like you know popping around in the seats we hit a big old bump though and i come i come i come down and hit my bottom of my jaw on the, on the seat in front of me with that metal bar that's inside that like you know leather covering and it hurts so bad and for some reason it always brings it like that memory comes back when i see things like this yeah, and that's when i i did like that description so i thought that was pretty cool but i'll give it a six five you give it a six is that where we're at oh is yes that where we're at now now we'll move on to the next book you're going to give us the credits. What is it, Eric? Titans number 11, written by Tom Taylor with R. by Lucas Meyer, Adriana Lucas, and Wes Abbott. And the beginning of our story is the backup to Nightwing, where we see the little 11-year-old Vanadia, who's just realizing, boy, I see these Teen Titans on TV, and I just want to grow up to be just like them. Whether it hurts my family, my schoolwork, I'm just going to keep working out, running, fighting, lifting weights. Like, you know, my coach is going to be really upset because I'm not going to put the effort in that he thinks I should to really go pro with the whole basketball thing. But one day, I'm going to be a superhero. I'm going to get costumed up. I'm going to go and, like, fight people on the streets. I'm going to go out there looking for trouble until one day I'm going to see there's applicants available at Star Labs. <laughs> New, new kind of like super drug, a post-human project where they're going to do things. And I'm going to tell this honest looking man, Tio Morrow, that one day, if you inject me with this, I want to be super strong. I want to be super fast. I really just want to be a titan and I want to help people. Oh, that's really uh, admirable. Here you go. Take this shot. It, it, it doesn't work out for Vanadia here because even though it, it, it gives her this power, the strength, the speed, and she's bigger, stronger, faster, all the best things. She she don't have a blockbuster heart like Heartless to keep her body going. Her heart's not able to take it. And old, old T.O. Morrow at Star Labs is like, just make sure you save that precious, delicious brain. And that's the thing. Is, you get to that, even that before that. I love the idea that you see her dunking a basketball. Like, 
Yeah, yeah, sign her up right now, WNBA. And then at one point, then you have Fast and Furious. She's chasing, she's racing a car. And yeah, her heart couldn't take it. She should have known yeah. that. They should have known it. And everything they've done with her, they don't seem to care that she might die. But then they want her brain saved. I, I'm, brain. So, I'm so curious, though, about the idea of the timeline events. Because she was 11. We, it looks like we have the new Teen Titans when, like, you know, Cyborg, Starfire all showed up with Beast Boy and Raven and stuff. So it's like, We've had a bunch of years pass. She's now of age to go through those illegally consent to experimental trials at Star Labs to where then she dies. T.O. Marvel keeps her brain. I'm like, how long was she on ice? Because in the previous issue, we had uh, like Amanda Waller come up to T.O. Morrow and be like, hey, wh- who did she used to be? It doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't matter. She's Vanadia now. But how long was she on ice before T.O. Morrow was able so to make an android later, body so for crazy, her? crazy, right? Yeah. I don't know. It just feels like. Teal Morrow out of nowhere just keeping his brain on check just in case Amanda Waller wants it like a new a new android from his ass. And even when he said like, hey, uh, you know, she says, Dr. Morrow, what happened? Oh, it's been some time, but it worked. I'm like, how long? Like it says years later that you just kind of hung with that brain. And, and it's so weird, too, the idea that we're doing this experimental trial that Teal Morrow is behind. When it's not really his forte, what he's doing, because he does androids. He makes sure that they... Exactly. Uh, not even that. Just Never the idea where you mentioned kind of that's weird. Yeah, like you know, say though, weird. he does androids and stuff like that. So this whole super soldier post human project that he's working on, it doesn't really seem to have mattered because he kept the brain to continue on his android projects. Like it's, it was like, what was he doing? At one point, it even looks like it's kind of a like you know wink wink amazo type deal. Like okay, we're gonna do like this where you're an android. And you're going to have the abilities of the te- – but not quite. But then even well, have the thing. lasso that's, things. I'm like, what that, the hell am I? That's a bit of an Ivo thing for the amazing. Yeah, yeah because, that's you know, what but, I thought of that. Like, T.O. Morrow is the guy who had, like um, – I'm trying to remember what her name was in Grant Morrison's run. The idea – at one point in Grant Morrison's run of the JLA, they had – I think her name was Tomorrow Woman. And she was a android built by T.O. Morrow and Ivo. And they're trying to compete on the idea of, like, whose programming was better with the android body they built for this woman who was nobody knew was an android. But eventually – Tio Mar was so impressed with the idea that he can make like these androids think they're people, have a morality and her own like sentient AI that she realized, hey, I want to help these people. She ended up dying saving the Justice League. And it's like, I won, Ivo, because I was better than you with what I built. And here we are, we almost have the same thing, but it wants to be he wants to make Venati as human as possible in this android body. Gave her these android superpowers. And but essentially, like, but I also made it so she can't see the Titans that she loves so much as the Titans. I have I have programmed her with the idea that the Titans have been kidnapped and the people behind it are a Titans tower. And even though they might look like the Titans, they're actually monsters in disguise. So that's part of her AI program. Like, all right, you could just program to say kill the Titans, I guess. But I don't Programmer, know. Programmer, you could have had if you. Were, I mean, I don't know why they want to go through like you, you know. It's also like Monty Hall that you're playing this. You know, which but the idea where. You could have said, Dr. Morrow, I, what happened? What happened? You tried to join them Titans and they said you were nothing and they killed you. Like you could even go that route. But like you said, you could just program her. You're programming the idea. You could just program her, be straight up. But I think that what they, again, this is where I say, and that's again, Tom Taylor, where he's, there's any, a villain is a a person you you haven't met yet, a a best friend, because I think that he, he doesn't want you to think that this girl is bad. So oh, even no. with programming, you want to make it seem like she's trying to save them, and it's exactly because it's even, always at running the end scared. Of the day, she's going to be like you know turned into a titan along those lines, even, which is funny because she ends up looking like a Tamaranian now in this new android body. So it's kind of funny to have her with the idea like with the rest of the Titans and Starfire and whatnot when she looks so Tamaranian in her new android body. But even when she finally comes to after her brain was on storage for so long, it's like, oh, hey, Doctor Morrow, what happened? Oh. Shit worked. You got superpowers, girl. I want her to start asking questions like, why do I have an android body and see things digitally through my eyes? Yep. Why is my face half Borg? <laughs> like, like, what is what does she think? Why are my arms? Do they look like pretty much action figures? Oh, you got to understand, Minotti. Resistance is futile. Yes, yeah, like, resistance is futile. And you have like five points of articulation. Like, Ooh, all that. That's a like, terrible like, point. Oh, my goodness gracious. Like, even then again, where... They're playing, and, and Tom Taylor wants to set up a, a villain that could be kind of on the because the big thing is Raven. But again, yeah. what he, what he's doing is exactly what we did have in the Nightwing book. We're not getting to the point. Like the the whole idea of this Raven stuff, this ends up being a little too convoluted to go forward to just be that thing in the background. 
to have Raven get hurt and kind of, you know, get the hell away from me and go off. But even in the meantime, Amanda Waller comes waltzing in. And then I think there's such a disconnect from what we saw. We saw Vanadia or Vanadia. You end up where we were trying to figure it out. Is this yeah. Tara's body? Is this? It's nothing. It's nothing. It's, nothing. it's a. It's a girl. T- and remember Gio when Mara was right when he said, "Does it matter?" Because it doesn't. No, and that that's also like a hand. But it's so weird where Amanda Waller even thought at it seemed this plan was, "Ooh, this is really going to get the Titans now. This is really going to be something that's going to get them right in the gut." But it's just a girl whose brain was on ice for years, who now has got superpowers because she's an android. And she doesn't know and whatever. Flaming hair and like a tamarind. Flaming hair like a tamarind. And then also thinking, you know, duping the idea that the Titans have been taken over, that what she sees is not real. They'll lie to you about these things. And again, it ends up like everybody's off the hook in any story. It seems that the guy who stole the rotisserie chicken, he's not bad. But Nightwing, he feels sad. But then he's going to work that out. And here, this girl who, you know, maybe we could have seen her try to join. But, you know, the Titans are assholes. They won't let her in. But even then, <laughs> she's just kind of on the outside. But they don't know her. They don't know what's going on. No. And now all of a sudden, it's this android girl brain is now going to attack the Titans in a way that it's supposed to be like, man, that's going to show them Titans. It's not going to show them anything. It's just well, they're going to the have to react. Is, that's the thing. It's not even going to show them because per, pretty much the thing is, hey, I'm going to send her there and they're going to kill the Titans. That's cool. Yeah, I really want you to destroy them Titans. Okay. I, I fed her a bunch of bullshit that doesn't matter that didn't need to be there, but they're going to go and kill the Titans. Cool. We're cool with that. Kill the Titans. Yeah. And and even then, I mean, sometimes with these, it almost feels like the idea is they don't even really think that she could do it. It's just going to go because it just it does feel, again, empty with this whole thing when we're sitting there thinking, okay, what's going to happen? And what I really thought this was a setup was for Raven to just rip her apart. Like, we were going to fight again, Raven being over the well, that, I Agreed. That's a great way to show her hand. And she tries at one point, but it never hits. She sends her out to deep space, but then, you know, she, the Nadia, boom, boom tubes. tubes back. And the, so it didn't matter. No fuss, no muss. But again, it didn't. But then in that, you end up halfway through the issue. All of a sudden, we swerve to Dick Grayson getting an alarm that he doesn't really understand an alarm. Did I set that? I think I'll waltz down into this, you know, pretty much. You know, dark room deal that we have safe room, and yeah. the safe room, and all of a sudden he's being told that he set up a Zornar type thing, Circinar that doesn't yeah. flow very well. That he's able to do R doesn't flow very well. We're just used to it. I think it's maybe we're used to it, but Circinar where you end up. I went at Cirque du Soleil, maybe you're doing some crazy things. Isn't that where you go into a party and you put your keys in, in like a hat and then everybody picks, right? And again, so, I, I don't think the idea of Cirque and R being this different thing than Zernar, I'm actually cool with it, especially for what Dick Grayson needs to do because he is told by an alarm to go to this room. He doesn't understand this, but it is something subconsciously he has set up in order to say Cirque and R out loud so then he can go inside and actually talk to his subconscious to figure out the problems with what's going on with Raven without her being able to read his mind and figure out that people are like, you know, oh no, am I showing my hand? Because people are starting to ask questions. I'm like, this is very clever. How he set up all of this, I have no idea. But the Circinar thing, I actually, when I first saw this panel, it was on Twitter. And I'm like, oh my God, what is Chip Zdarsky doing? I was yeah, doing yeah, this. Yeah, it's, like, it's the same thing. And I thought I was going to hate it, but the idea is cool. I just don't know how we set up a Zurinar protocol like Batman has, but it's different by saying Circinar, obviously the Cirque being the circus, like tragedy that he went through when his parents died, but then the NR doesn't like work the way the Zurinar things like Zora would like would end up in Arkham, how his father said to him, and the Zur and R is that whole thing. I, I like the idea. I just don't know how we set up the Cirque and R to be this. This is the thing that I know. First off, again, it's so that he can kind of detective work. And see if yeah, what he's seeing. So, but in the mind, first off, there's no end up like there's no cold trails. There's nothing where it's just straight up everything that's happened where he's like, I think this is, you know, this is something that we should nothing of. Well, what about that? Well, I don't think it is. And even in that, this this Cirque is an asshole. You end up where you're in there. I don't need if I'm making this. This is what happened when we had. Uh, was it last week? When we ended up, Siri ended up activating, I say that, it's right, right. And it ends up activating, and I said to you, I don't need something to tell me that I got to go do more things. I need it to do the work. You go in and the subconscious is like, what else? I'm like, no, just tell me. You're part of my subconscious. This is part of me. Like We're working things out together. But again, not working out because it seems the subconscious already knows because he says she was. she seemed distant, cold, colder than usual. She was overly violent with her brother. What else? And then he's like, well, they, 
No, just say, say when you get in there, this is what I've been doing. The circuit R deal, the subconscious. This is what you didn't realize you were seeing. This isn't how the subconscious works, though. But it, it doesn't work like this either. We don't get to go into our subconscious. <laughs> I'm saying it knows all the answers, and it wants Dick Grayson to be the one. Like, it, it's, it, it's a tutor going, okay, now extrapolate that. Let's figure out that. And I'm like, all it is is wasting more time to spell and, it out. It's a way to spell imagine it out. Imagine this, though. The subconscious knows how much Dick Grayson likes to win. So when he gets to figure it out himself, he gets a pat on the back. Everybody in the situation wins. Subconscious, conscious, all the Dick Graysons. She has seemed distant, cold, colder than usual. She was overly violent with her brother. What else? Uh, Donna Troy seemed to be really odd. At the- no, no, no. Don't do it. Let's go back. Like It, it knows what is the thing. And if, if Dick Grayson went any sort of way wrong, what does it do then? Does it pull him back? Does it just tell him? It just felt weird, the idea of it, like, egging him on. You figure it out. Yeah, you know the answer now. But that's what happened. And he ends up yeah. figuring out that, okay, and, and the idea of this being set up that he has recognized that Raven only sleeps for a bunch of minutes, he's 20 minutes. No 20 more minutes than 20 minutes yeah. a night. They go in and have this little talk every seven minutes. It seems like this was the first time, though, but you're going to do it. And he says everything seems sus. And to the end where you're now jumping to conclusions of all this seems colder, maybe that it was Hermes, maybe this thing. What else? Say it. I'm telling you, it annoyed me. And he's like, uh oh, Rachel Roth may long go, no longer inhabit her own body. I'm like, okay, you just want A plus B equals Z. Like, I, I think there'd be more to it than that, but boy, it's right because it's right. Oh, yeah. And so he's like, oh, God. And then say it, go, say it. You know, say, okay, Circan R. And then he turns that off. And I this have was to, also I Raven have to wonder, though. Mind. Exactly. So Raven can't understand that he's on to her. So he has this whole subconscious block to make sure that the answer's there. But when he comes to them, like, how much do you understand and remember? Because in, he has to reset the alarm so they can have these conversations again. But it seems more like a subconscious kind of like, you know, hypnosis thing where you're doing well, it you without don't realize. knowing you're doing it. But do you have this information when you're right? done? This was the 10th time. That's why at the beginning, he had to explain it again because he doesn't remember shit on shit. He just, and even the new. idea. Let's say he does. He's like he's waking up. Well, you from don't a dream want to remember. Here. She can read your mind about exactly, remembering. But, but what you need to know enough to get the rest of the Titans on board to say, "Hey, we got to start the Dark Wing Queen here." It is the weird thing. You want to keep like again. You want to keep the info in the subconscious so she doesn't read it. But it goes in the subconscious for the subconscious to egg him on to know it, and then you come out of it where she would immediately be able to read your mind and know that you like. Not that she would know fully even that. Okay, you do, but that you do this every night. And then you found, oh, it, it's, it's weird. But even yeah. the idea, let's say you come to, like, you know, from a dreaming state, essentially, when you come to, because the alarms of Titan's Tower start going off. He comes out of the circuit and, and immediately Venadia breaks through the freaking walls and starts battling everybody she can find right away. I'm like, it's almost like when you get up to take a leak in the middle of the night, though. Do you remember your dream? Because you're not dreaming anymore and you just went right to take it. Because of this whole invasion of Titan's Tower, like, is it going to be out of his mind? Well, what I love about it is, is that, to play the game against Raven so she doesn't know, you would think it would be out of his mind, but then why do you do it? Because of there, and it might be here even then, I thought, when you end up going, like, you, nighty night, you know, Titans, raise the, the storm shields, like, you know, don't let them, you're there inside, please, like, the idea that you're going to get attacked, because they could be attacked at any time, but that's the play that she's able to bust in, you monsters, and then she's going to go up against the things. And this is what reminded me of like an Amazo type deal or whatnot. You know, Donna Troy, she says fake Donna Troy. And then you foul pretender. Here, have the lasso of pain. I'm like, does Trinity have that one? I mean, let's see. Honestly, that's all where my mind went was the idea. Like, is that one of Trinity's three lassos that she has in the future? <laughs> the lasso of pain? Doing that, but it feels like, you know, and it's almost like not the low rent, you know, Amazo, but it's like the... Okay, Android version of wannabe fangirl wants to be the Titan, so let's give her. Yeah, you know, she has sticks. She ends up having some cyborg stuff. I mean, that's right on. She has a lasso and the, the hair. Like everything is something, but it's a lot of it's superficial. But I, just I to be the, the is, ultimate Titan, I do want to go against you just because of the Amazo was Ivo's thing, and I'm like, but but the thing is, the power is the idea of how she's doing it and wanting to be a part of the Titans. It is very Ivo about it. It which doesn't feels feel. Weird, but, it, it's not fully, but it feels like this is that. Wink, wink. This oh, yeah, is I get like you. the deal. And, and but like T.O. Morrow, I just go with the idea like she is an android with a soul. It, it, well, she is trying to protect what she thinks. Now, is this just going to be that? No, no. How are they going to be able to figure it out the way of she just says, you know, I think that you guys are evil and she's they can show her some. I, I don't know because she's just attacking and then her hair. 
lights on even, fire. I'm telling you, even at the one point when her hair turns fire, it looks like she's shooting star blasts out. Like it looks like she has, you know, Starfire's ability on top of the lasso of pain from Donna Troy and stuff. But it, it does feel very Amazo like, which actually bothers the hell out of me. Got the sticks back there, the Nightwing. Yes. Yeah, the scrimma sticks. She's gonna go, and she's got cyborgs boom tubes. Yeah, she and yeah, she's got that i just say she's a kind of a side but like i want her to be like oh no i better turn in and now she's turning into different animals i, I don't know i and don't even know the idea plays. of that tio maro having like boom tube technology i'm like that's a gigantic leap forward i don't think you should be able to have that here's the thing maybe that was the amanda waller side of it giving them things because remember maybe. amanda amanda waller that bitch she ended up giving the, the merlin time <laughs> merlin. travel Tech manipulation and, and tech. manipulation <laughs> craziness. Like she seems to have a she's lot got some of stuff. stuff. She's got some stuff hanging around, and she's now, got a red room somewhere full of alien tech. Just like you know, people are itching to get to. I think that where some of the things going, where you could have, where you know, you do. She has the justice, the the what's it called, the order, the House of Order now instead of being the Hall of Justice now. Oh, it's right, the Hall right. of Order. So she yeah. can grab some things and maybe have. Tio Mara, like, man, I didn't know you you could get a hold of Boomtons. Like, hey, when you take over the Justice League, you could get a lot of shit. Like, it would have been pretty cool. Uh, but in the meantime, you end up where Rachel Raven gets hit. She's bleeding. She's having she problems. She impaled. Yep. <laughs> and Beast Boy goes over and says, and again, you're not going to want right. to show it. So it's impaled underneath you. the coat. And oh, he's nice. He's nice. And she goes, get the get hell off me. And you see him upset, but she's like, just she like has a to drunk go girlfriend. <laughs> it is true. Our, our drunk, some like not girlfriend, but you thought it. I, I don't know. I, that seems sus. He, he, she goes it does, through. Stop it. She goes through this portal. That's where you end up having that big halberd axe deal that we had before. She goes and gets that. The one that, that trilogy had that made him super strong and gigantic and stuff like that. She needs this to, in order replenish. to heal herself, replenish, gain some more power, and also. Dark Raven Queen the hell out because now she's pissed off. This thing came on and not only hurt her, but it's going to hurt her generals in the world that she tries to bring about. So ain't nobody going to hurt her titans. Yeah, she says, I'm not going to let any harm come to my titans. They're my generals. And again, you keep playing that game of, you know, let's just get to it. Let's have these. And the worst part, that's the ending. And I swear, like, oh, my God, shit's just getting real. I didn't realize that was the last page. I thought this battle was just beginning for how quick this book reads. And I'm like. How could it possibly be this quickly? Because I'm not like a speed reader. I'm not a smart guy. I'm reading comic books and talking about it. But this book went so fast. I'm like, you just Tom Taylor the hell out of me, which sucks because it's on twofold. Because the thing is, yeah, because it was really getting, getting cool. It was getting cool. And then yeah. I have to wait again. And that's <laughs> what always thing. happens. A lot of times where we end up where it's that play. I like that. Like, again, I don't love, you know. I can't even. I always remember her, uh, uh, Vernadia, uh, Vernadia. I always want to say, say yeah. I, I don't think that that's the greatest of characters, but no. it sets up a pretty good, good fight that then goes with Raven to really up the ante to what we wanted to see with also Nightwing possibly knowing about it so he can go in and get. And when you get to the point where it does feel like that would be what the meat and cheese of the issue would be, that's when you end. And now we're going to have to wait and you know, obviously a month, and, and then the go thing. through some other things to get to that point again. And it seems I, to always not get there. I just, now we have a two-fold story because you want to know more about Venati and how we're going to turn her into, a, like, a, a real girl again. But you also have a dark real girl. stuff. And I don't want either story to end too quickly. And I, I feel like because we have these dueling stories, one's going to end the other one pretty damn quickly to continue on with just the one. That is true. Yeah, that's that's one of my problems, too. And having, like, Amanda Waller, I wish you'd had a little more with her not just her hanging still and like yep that's cool take down the titans and if this works i'll give you anything you want including time travel tech go ask merlin that guy did crazy <laughs> shit do you know but, what he did also, to the green but, arrow i mean holy but moly. also don't ask merlin because i definitely sold his ass out the green arrow yeah, afterwards yeah, that'd be funny he's like i would like to see and talk to merlin like yeah he's in some other world dimension yeah you can't do that right now but maybe later Maybe ask Oliver because he's the one coming back. I don't think that the old Merlin's coming back right now. But uh, yeah, oh, and, or also talk about some other guys that I set up to be really cool, like Ultraman. Oh, wait, he died. Wait a minute. What am Go I doing here? Dreamer. What am Shit. I doing? Oh, she ran off and I've, I'm blackmailing her. I her doxed side, her neighborhood. Her neighborhood. Uh, listen, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, T.O. Morrow, or you won't have a T.O. Morrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's the thing. She's pointing her eyes and pointing at him. Just shut your mouth, T.O. Morrow. 
also at the end, I want to have at the end where you have this deal and it doesn't work. Amanda Wells and Eddie's like, listen, that's Ivo shit. I want to get the hell out of here. I want to go back to Tio that's, Morrow that's shit. The thing is, it is an Ivo thing with this android because for some reason when I was reading it, I was just looking at her as a, like a Tio Morrow android. Like somebody who's going to be able to be redeemed like a red tornado, realize that they could be a real person again outside of the program that they have. But I'm like, the more we talked about it, like, cause you just kept saying Ivo, which just pissed me off. And I'm, just, I'm scrolling through the pages. I'm like, well, no, for some, it's just because I, just, it's, it's, I was it's just saying because no. it felt like Amazo no, stuff. No, right? the thing is, you're, you're spot on because it does feel like Amazo stuff. And I was really trying not to have it be that, but each page is like, yep, there's those powers. Those are those powers. It is a team. T- it's a Titan Amazo robot. The, the thing that gets me too is at this moment, Amanda Waller and everybody seems to be also making Amazo robots to do things exactly. so it all just worked out. I just want Ivo to jump in. You're ripping my shit off. That would be funny. He shows up and like, what? Teal Morrow, it's always you. Like, they have this rivalry, like, what well, is do. what? And going in, yeah. they do. That is true. Uh, but what would you give it? I like this one more than Nightwing, just because there's aspects of the story that I look forward to seeing next. Like, I'm saying, there's two aspects, and I wish they would both continue. I don't think they will in the way that I want them to, but the art looks great throughout, and it's just, it's, it's a 6.5 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 7. It, re- it reads so quick. That, I'm telling you, so once, quick. Once the book feels like it starts and it's going somewhere, it's over. And that aspect alone is super disappointing. I think my problem uh, with Nightwing is mainly because we're actually like trying to get to a point that we should have gotten to eight months ago. Like we're, yeah. we're still dealing heartless. So when you get anything, you need to push it and you're not really pushing it forward. Even when you get a, a, a cliffhanger of, you know, pretty much heartless saying. Get the heart gun. I'm like, okay, here we go. Because then I'm waiting for B. Bennett to come in, the pirate queen. She's doing her B. Like, blood. All, all these things going. But in this, this does seem a bit fresh. Seems a little odd, and it pushes the idea again where you would think that Raven, being bad Raven, she's going to want to destroy the Titans. You have to be reminded that she doesn't want to do that. She wants to turn them. Much she wants to try against the Yeah, and be the generals. And in the meantime, we keep thinking. You know, she's going to fall in love with Gar. She's going to do this. It didn't seem that way. So we'll have to see how this happens. She's, she's going to be all Brainiac about it where she realizes that love is the way. Family's the way. Is there going to be a way in that? And also, we also know that Raven has that crown of the, you know, jewel type things. There's a lot of spaces to fill that a lot of the others would fill in of the Titans. But we'll have to see how that goes. And will Rachel, who's in that, and Trinity, who we don't like, are they going to be able to help trilogy. Trilogy, I mean, yeah, trilogy. Such a I hate lame that demon brother so much. Just the idea that he's from the Lazarus Lane nonsense. But uh, yeah, I'm a seven. You're a six five. So we have that. I I like the art. Pretty cool. Looks Pretty great. cool down there. Uh, but we'll see, and hopefully we will get more of uh, Venadia. I love where she's like, and I had a cool superhero name, Venadia. I'm like, that, that's not a great. That's not a great name. It's not a great name. Just call yourself Titan. How about that? Did you like that? Just Titan. She's well, there. even that she she had the Titan symbols tattooed to her shoulders before anything happens. I'm like, yeah, I don't know where Venati has come from, but you know what? I would like to know. It's funny. I see that. I'm like, why do you have Mister Terrific? You know, T Sphere. Oh, that's the Titan <laughs> symbol. I'm like, I got it. Like, there's some confusion. But honestly, it's weird because that seems like something that would happen to me where I get the T Sphere tattooed. Like, hey, well, he got a Titan symbol. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, I, I, I thought I was Mister Terrific. You're like, you're not even Mister like half good. But I bought the jacket and everything. Sure, I was to go sleeve. Terrific. You're, you're Mr. Kind of Capable. That's yeah, what I kind call of. you. Kind of. But all in all, yeah, not bad books. But, you know, we always, it, it always makes us get back to the scenario that you're there drinking Fago at the Insane Clown Posse concert. At the Obviously end, it's you, gonna go somewhere. you just always think that, you know, you could have gotten more. Like they, they would they end there and they're like, you More didn't do, they didn't do the full, like, you know, dark Malenko or whatever the hell you're doing. Like they, they, they cut it short, Eric, and then they left. They left town and, and Twisted didn't come out for a little bit of a back and forth, like, you know, you know, one, two, one, <laughs> two, buckle my show. for 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you, did you, it doesn't surprise you that I pulled Twisted. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but, but that's that. But that's Jim, that. you don't even realize they've been beefing for years. They have been, but again, that would have been you thought that you heard that they were going to beef <laughs> right there, and they didn't. They didn't show up, and and the dark ones in the you know in the crowd. They were My upset. rep group. Yeah, your rep group. They were upset. You wanted more of a like an inspiration. It didn't happen. Uh, but all in all, still again, you know, decent enough, decent enough, and and better than a lot of other books. Hopefully, the books that we do this week. 
will be uh, a lot better as well. And we Hopefully. will be doing our regular show. So if you're watching this and hearing us for the first time, you do see that much to some people's chagrin that we like to deep dive into things and have fun. Talk about the insane clown posse, whether it makes sense or not. We will go for it. Eric, I will go, I will go for it. Say, what is this week? Here's what I'm telling everybody right now. I will go full in and try to figure out for the rest of the show how I could turn it. It still didn't work, but I will go for it. But uh, we'll be talking about a bunch of books, which I should probably, as we're saying this, should probably name. Never thought of that we would do that on this side of the show. But since we're putting this on the YouTubes, Eric, I'm heading over. I'm going to tell tell me, what score did you give? Oh, that six point five. Uh, six point five. Out of ne- ten. You negative nasty. Just to tell everybody that uh yesterday, Thursday, we did have our Patreon only spotlight. That is two books picked by the badass level of the Get Fresh crew uh-uh, we, on our Patreon. And the two books they picked that we did talk about were Alan Scott, The Green Lantern, number six, and Justice finale. versus Godzilla versus Kong number seven. Those two ended up being finale. Like, yeah, finale. It ended up being like an hour and forty five minutes. So again, we like to deep dive, have a lot of fun. But this week on our regular show, we'll be talking about Batman Superman World's Finest number twenty seven, Catwoman Imps number sixty five, nine lives. Eh? We'll also have Superman number fourteen. House, House of, of Brainiac. House of Brainiac, House of Lobo, House of L, House of the Twisted. Who knows? Who knows who's going to show up? Titan, uh, uh, we did that. And Wonder Woman number nine. Something's going on there. Possibly, Killing rats, I don't know. Yeah, possibly a couple other books on the slide that you don't know about, maybe. But we'll see. But we end up doing that. And if you end up just wanting to listen to it on our regular feed, that comes out Sunday night. If you want to get involved, every level of the Patreon, where we'll have a link in the show notes of this. You can go and get early access on Saturday night, get a little head start. And also, if you haven't gone over there, patreon.com slash weird science, there is a seven day free trial that you can check out. So check all those things out, right, Eric? That's what I say. Right. We are done. Eric's a negative nasty. What do we say at the end of the Thank God It's Friday show? In a world full of chimps, always make sure you go ape. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science. It's the revolution.